Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for having us here. First of all, I would like to ask a question. Can you show me your hand if you know how to ride a bicycle? Oh, many people. Thank you very much. So what is the most lesson that you learned from riding a bicycle? Finding a right balance. Not too much on the left, not too much on the right, but it's all about the balance. So the same case happened with Montau Health healthcare system. So today, my team aim to provide a bright balance from Malta between the private and the public sector. Good afternoon, everyone, once again. My name is Sally, and this is Rahu. This is Kai, and this is Kate. And we are from RMIT University of Vietnam. For the next 20 minutes, we will first analyze the situations, then we will suggest our strategy for Mata to find the right balance. Then we will come into a detailed implementation, risk, and then conclude with our takeaway. So first of all, I would like to invite my colleagues for the analysis. Thank you, Sally. So to start off, I would like to just go over the overview and what Malta is in the um, healthcare. Uh, and when we look at Malta, we can first start with their funding. And we see that their funding is primarily through three um, pr primary sources, which is the tax revenue, um, the insurance, and class one and class two funding, which is further divided into um, how they're funded through employment and how the employers pay them. So when we go into the tax revenue, we see that the EU, EU average is at 79%, whereas Malta only takes care of 69, which is sufficiently below um, the average. And we see that the funding is not su sustainable for the public sector. Now, when we look into the public sector, we see that the public sector is um, only eight hospitals in Malta, with six specialized hospitals, so only two general hospitals, and a lot of care centers peppered throughout the country. Now, they are one thing that they're really good at is their good care. Malta, uh, the public sector is very good at providing a good experience for the con uh, customers and providing them valuable health care and also services after their health care has been done. But when we come into the private sector, we see that private sector is much more efficient in their operations and much more efficient in terms of selling their product. And we see that they have three hospitals and they are in high demand due to the ineffect, uh, the, um, even though the public sector is free, people tend to switch over to the private sector because they believe that the long waiting lines and the inability to book appointments is a big issue and they don't mind paying to get into the private sector. Now when we look at the private sector, as I mentioned, there are three main hospitals, then there are uh, multiple private clinics throughout the country and there are packages that they provide to, uh, as a product. So that's something that the public sector does not do is provide packaged products. And finally, they have good sales and marketing. And this is where they are efficient at selling their product, but we can see later on that these rises issues. So when we go into what the objective and what we're trying to achieve through this presentation is that we're trying to leverage from both public and private. We're trying to leverage from their maximizing and their care to provide an equilibrium. And that equilibrium is to answer the question how to maximize on both sectors and how to integrate well. So just to reiterate what my colleague has mentioned, firstly, for the public sector, there's a, an ongoing issue of shortages, both in terms of the trained doctors and the facilities available. And there's an issue with the appointment time in terms of excessive appointment time, and lastly, overuse. And whereas the private sector, we see the issue of overprescription and unnecessary drugs that leads to addiction. In fact, Malta has one of the highest, is the 10th highest in terms of drug abuse in the EU. And and secondly, there's an overstay leading to an overstay uh, in terms of beds and the procedures. And so uh, the procedures, um, a lot of doctors give procedures that are unrequired for patients. And also the equipments, a lot of the equipments that are necessary are not implemented in these pr uh, private facilities because they are not uh, profitable. And in terms of um, society, there's an issue with obesity. So obesity is one of the biggest causes of death in Malta and chronic diseases as well as, as cardiovascular making up 
of up to 46.7% of all deaths in Malta, as well as hypertension. So from all these three factors, we can see that in terms of public, there's an issue. The, issue, the key issue with public is that there's a lack of motivation. There's a lack of motivation to be efficient and to make profit. And this contrasts directly with the private sector in which they are too profit driven. And as a result, this leads to a lot of issues in terms of over, um, a lot of social issues that leads to unhealthy lifestyle of uh, the population. So how can we leverage the opposing um, ideals of these two sectors to create a balance in the overall healthcare system of Malta? So the strategy that we have suggested are the triple E's, enhance, evaluate, and enrich. So firstly, for enhance, we will um, alter the ownership structure of your, of your country's healthcare facilities. In terms of enrich, we will directly tackle the lifestyle issues with your population that has arise as a result of the system. And we will, put in, we will also suggest regulations in terms of both of these other aspects and also implementation of digitalization to make the process more efficient. So now I'll tackle the first one, which is the enhanced strategy. And the reason why we named it the enhanced strategy is because we provide care, but we want to enhance that. We want to enhance it so that it is not a loss-making mechanism, but something that provides care in a way that it is sustainable in the long run. And sustainable not only in terms of long run, in terms of independence as well within the country. So for the enhanced strategy, we, we recommend that the country try to privatize their eight hospitals and while retaining only 25% of the shares. Now what this allows is that it allows for a private uh, profit motive, like Kate said, which can be an advantage since this allows for efficiency and it allows for product focus that we require in these hospitals. And this will allow for us to also maintain a relationship with the private companies and allow us to combine both of our uh, expertise and our positives to come up with a better system. Now, we can do this through three primary targets. Number one is to ask the current private healthcare firms to invest in these hospitals, to buy out shares in these hospitals. Second, we can ask for FDI. There's a lot of FDI interest in especially these fields of healthcare, and this is another opportunity. And if both of these fail, finally, there's an option of asking the smaller clinics to be small shareholders in our uh, public hospitals. So now for our second strategy, we will look into, after en uh, enhancing it, how we can evaluate it. So firstly, as we've previously uh, mentioned, the issues regarding lifestyle and the lifestyle of your population. So we suggest that you directly um, enhance the lifestyle issues via these two um, methods. Firstly, via a food tax. So what you can do is you can um, increase the tax rates for companies, uh, particularly junk food companies and fast food restaurant chains based on the average fat content of the products produced by these manufacturers and this has to be a progressive tax in order to reduce the consumption of fat and this in theory should reduce the problem of obesity and increase the life expectancy of your population. Secondly, uh, we also suggest a smoking tax by, uh, implemented on tobacco companies. So we suggest a, a rate of around 10%. And all of these taxes in terms of food taxes and smoking taxes can be used to directly fund medical insurance. So we leverage off the bad side um, the negative side to encourage the positive side. And thirdly, uh, we also suggest uh, and, and um, as previously mentioned, a lot of the what happens with a lot of the private facilities is that there, there is a lack of equipment that is necessary. Even though these equipment are necessary, they are not profitable, and that's why they haven't been included. And that's why we suggest that you make it a legal regulation and requirement that these equipment are there. And you also should have annual um, equipment checkups, and you can also provide a ranking of these. Uh, of these healthcare facilities based on uh, the quality assessment of your checkups. And lastly, in terms of standardization, we also suggest you provide a standardized um, procedure for your drug prescription. So for example, uh, when a diagno diagnosis is given for a specific illness, there's a max maximum amount of drug that can be uh, given in terms of prescription. And if 
a healthcare practitioner put, uh, gives a prescription above that amount, then there's an automatic red mark. And coming to the second uh, recommendation to evaluate all of these uh, recommendations that we have been given, as we have already noted, if we privatize the, our systems of hospitality, uh, hospitals, it's, it's very hard to control everything. That's why we suggest to do a digitalization in the systems. And what we mean by digitalization, firstly, we're going to do the citizen po patient portfolio. So uh, this is a way that we learn from the Sweden system that I have already have the swipe card. So for this, we're going to it creates uh, mob mobile platforms uh, and applications where we can uh, have a healthcare account for every citizen ID, and uh, we can record on the health treatment record, uh, records that has they have already been doing, so that uh, we can know uh, the situations and an overall analysis, and it helps to give a better control for the system of the private um, of a now private uh, hospital on souls. And then we can use uh, leverage a big data process in it to enhance the control over the process. So as K has already mentioned, there's a big part about the control of the private. Uh, private hospital because firstly they are trying to make more money from the um, over prescriptions and also they uh, make uh, on the prolonged day so with the big data we can use the auto detecting via machine learning to say to see if a patient has already been uh, for example if a patient has already been cured uh, is that over prescription necessary or not and uh, it can also help to uh, know if they need, uh, if they can already go out of the hospital already. And then we're going to have um, control more on the feedback and complaints. So um, you know, we can know better if the, if the um, uh, hospital are doing well. And uh, lastly, we're going to have a digital services uh, in terms of this. For this, we can have better appointment, uh, booking appointment, because in the case, there's also a problem with the uh, very o overcrowding services and um, the, um, the people cannot uh, book their appointment with the doctors in case they need it. And uh, the digital services have this to become very much easier since they can find the slot. And uh, lastly, there will be the an online consultancies uh, for this uh, because the people are now overusing the services and this uh, creates um, uh, a waste in the resources and they, we believe that the online consultancies can help a lot because if the if the patient has a problems, they can just chat through the online consultants and they can give feedbacks or they can give a way to cure that so that we don't, they don't really have to use the services in the real hospital. So to look at uh, digitalization, digitalization primarily is a support mechanism for our regulation, for our evaluation strategy, which is to ensure that we have a handle of what the private companies are doing. And additionally, it is also a fact that um, there's an opioid crisis starting. And if we look at a country like the US, which has a opioid crisis, primary, the primary reason is due to overprescription. So we want to limit this through the digitalization and big data learning. And the outcome for uh, the two first uh, recommendation about enhancing and evaluating is first it improve the services quality because we are now having a better control over the whole process. And the second problem that it's going to have to solve is to resolve the shortage of, uh, of, the, of the equipment and the human resources. Because at first, we are now having a shortage for the public sector, but if we private uh, privatize it. Uh, we believe that we're going to now have enough resources of uh, doctors, of equipments and facilities for the patients. And then we're going to have an overall controlling efficiency. And uh, lastly, we're going to have to change the behavior of the customer through the digitalization process. Thank you, Kai. The perfect final piece, piece to complete the picture of healthcare system is your people. So in order to enrich this strategy, we are tackling this lifestyle to solve the two main health issues of Malta, which is obesity and drug addictions. How we are going to do that? A few years ago when I was diagnosed with obesity, the community was the one that saved me. So I believe the same thing would happen with everyone. With external help, you can fight any of your, exter any of your health issues. So we believe by building a community both offline and online will help solve many people. For offline people, we suggest that you should implement workshops to educate health issues from how to have a nutritious diet and how to exercise, how to live healthily every day. And secondly, it's you can, through workshop, you can educate each and every one of your populations to know about your new regulations and how to use digital to make their life better, to make them feel healthier. 
And of course, I believe that with implementing and investing in local support groups in every district or um, where everyone can be accessible through every age, every gender, that would help save a lot of problems. And, but however, in the age, in the era of technology, online platform can also be leveraged through social media, through forum, and also a real-time 24-7 help center. However, this strategy can have to face four risks. First of all is operational risk. When you are um, privatizing the, pub, the public hospital, you may face with human risk as in conflicts or the tra transitioning process or restructuring. However, we believe that you can tackle these by communication tool, by monitoring, and by sharing everyone on the same page of your visions and missions. And secondly, uh, regulators, uh, for example, for you establishing local groups, may, ha may face many local policy or, or, or spaces. However, you can tackle these by having a few people in a regulation compliant office to make sure that every local rules is uh, complied and also external help from university or other community uh, support. And re reputational risk can happen when you are pri privatizing or while you're implementing a lot of marketing uh, campaign. However, you can tackle this backlash by very transparent media release. Why are you doing this? What, uh, will it beneficial for your public or not, and, and having a spokesperson and peer to handle any crisis. And last but not least, you can tackle cyber risk on online platform or digitalizations through beta testing and server management. Um, coming to the timeline, we are now at 2017, and we believe uh, for the first recommendation of enhancing, it would take half of a year to uh, prepare for the process, and after that, we're going to start to selling out the uh, part of our, of our hospital to the um, to the party that we have mentioned before in our recommendations, and then uh, how to for the evaluate uh, for the evaluate recommendations, we believe that um, the implications gonna take uh, another half, uh, roughly a year from the half from in the middle of 2017 to in the middle of 2018 to uh, launch start to launching the digital platforms, and uh, before that, and we can only do this after we have already. You have already been selling out uh, part of our company, so that's why it takes uh, that long. To and also we need the R&D during this process, and uh, we're gonna launch the online services in 2019 since we have already uh, on the platform have already been stabilized, stabilized it, uh, stabilizedly uh, implied, and uh, the whole things after that is about development and uh, keep improving the services. And lastly, for the enrich, we're gonna launch the social right after, uh, social media platform right after this to help the people better. And uh, the workshops gonna be implied throughout the years. So coming to another part of the tackle, uh, one another part is the PPP that currently that uh, Malta is taking part in, and uh, we believe that the best way is to end the PPP. And the reason why we recommend the P uh, ending of PPP with Stuart Healthcare is because one, it's proven to be very inefficient, and it's uh, management of its resources. It's uh, wasting money in areas that do not require this money. And this has uh, created a consens consensus in the country that the government is not taking care of its people. Now that is a very dangerous thing and we recommend that ending the PPP will help both in public perception and as well as to more efficiently use this money for other sectors that we mentioned before. So other than the inefficiency, there is a shifting focus that we're trying to bring with our strategy. Our strategy is focused on shifting to a more domestic approach. We want to be self-sufficient, like we mentioned, and we also want to be, uh, st uh, we want to stability over time. Now, the funding, as I mentioned, is uh, 220 million. Um, whatever is remaining after the process, because it's been a year and a half, uh, is n should be used and funded back into the uh, recommended strategy. Additionally, there is also the taxes that we have uh, mentioned in the evaluate uh, strategy, which is on the food tax and the uh, food and, um, alcohol and tobacco task, which can also generate um, a, a funding for our, our other recommendation. And finally, the privatization funds that we receive by selling out shares of the company, uh, of the hospitals, will also allow us funding for the above mentioned uh, strategies. Now these costs, uh, the costs that we have in terms of how we need this money and use this fund is for one, the digital platform. It is the key uh, to the future and it is the key to ensuring that all, every process, the entire process is more efficient. And the digital platform is a very expensive investment 
And we believe that uh, the um, funding me me mechanism will be enough to ensure the uh, digital platform is stabilized. Secondly, uh, for the big data, as my cons uh, fellow consultant Kai has mentioned. And finally, the workshop and online content that we are doing in our Enrich strategy. So, Thank you very much. And we will now proceed to the Q&A session. Um, thank you for the presentation. Uh, it's very detailed. And your opening statement is to try to privatize. Because the public service is uh, too stressed. There are too many demands and so on. But what you have not actually said in the whole presentation is the cost to the patient after the privatization. Because at the moment, uh, the public service is free. Uh, what about after privatization? Can the, um, will the I'm sure the cost will go up. And is it affordable to the patients? This is, this, you have missed out the whole lot of, of that. Maybe you can tell us now. Uh, thank you for your question. And uh, I, I don't think we clarified in the presentation, but um, the cost is still banked by the uh, country, and uh, we work directly with the privatized companies. So the entire digital platform is so that we ensure that all the um, uh, all the costs is directly coming to the the is kind of directly coming to the tax fund as the previous method of uh, free healthcare. And we allow that. We also ensure that we can see how the um, overpricing is done, whether the private companies are overpricing, and so we have a better s sense to regulate these companies as well. Still, you know, uh, both the government and the citizen will not agree to this if the cost of health care to the citizen as a result of your recommendation will go up significantly. Um, uh, thank you for your questions again. So uh, we believe that um, throughout the process of private Organizations, um, the cost is um, would be increased, yes, but uh, there will be hu a huge part of the insurance that gonna be covered to that cost. And throughout um, throughout the digitalization platform process, we're gonna be ensure uh, that everyone's with insurance gonna be recorded in their ID account on the mobile, and that gonna be. Uh, that gonna be covered for their cost for using the hospital services and. Um, uh, we believe we know that the cost is going to be increased, but uh, at first the free services is on is also a problem that were mentioned in the case because it was the free services. That's why the people are overusing it, and it uh, and it leads to a huge part of the uh, wasting of resources. Yeah. Know, yeah. So we believe that uh, having a bit of cost is also another way for uh, the people to be more careful with that way. So to be more direct, the cost uh, the citizens do not pay for their healthcare still. We still are on the um, uh, on the free healthcare system. Uh, the 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 difference is the dynamic of how the government interacts with the private companies. Is that the uh, the invoice is sent to the government and the government takes care of the expenditure. I have a related question. I think I think this is a, a great set of actions, but it's a very complex thing to pull off and to convince a population. So service offering and healthcare will change, and there will be a period of disruption you suddenly will have to open up your personality and share a lot of data, so people will have privacy issues. You will suddenly tax products that people really like, smoking, alcohol, unhealthy food. So how do you want to bring the population along? Because you pretty much will upset everyone in this journey. Um, so firstly, um, thank you for your question. So firstly, a great part of that going to be solved by the education uh, educational workshop and on the educational uh, program that we m invite uh, pr provides because as we have already know uh, on of those fun activity that you have been mentioning yes they might be fun but we believe that there's a huge part among that gonna uh, destroy the societies in general and their health uh, and their health also and that was uh, something that we want to tackle because um, as, as was mentioned in the case, uh, the country is one of the very worst countries in terms of people with obesity and people with over, over, over drugs and uh, many problems with that. So um, this is a way that we can, because the society needs time to change and this was um, overall Im improvement for the whole society. So the educational workshop gonna, in a way, uh, bring out the benefit for it and uh, uh, resolve the and it's gonna gradually make the people accept that. 
so like you mentioned very clearly, it is a short-term disruption that we believe should, be, uh, should outweigh the long-term advantage for the entire population. We believe that our strategy is serving for the sustainable growth of all the parties, and transparency is, is the key in communicating these benefits to everyone, especially the public, and we believe this is will be widely accepted. Thank you very much. Um, great, great presentation. And uh, just, I've got two questions, actually. The first one is about funding. The second one is about execution, but I'll split it up. So the first one about funding. Um, I understand that you're raising funds. It's going to support your evaluate and enrich programs and, and others as well. So once you have a 75%, 25% sort of venture, um, what if it fails? Who foots the bill? And do you have enough resources to do that? And, um, and what's your thinking behind that? So uh, by, uh, just to clarify, by failing, do you mean like we're unable to find investors to invest into? It, it could be an initial stage on an investment, but then you won't go into a joint venture. But let's say you go into this venture uh, where there's a, a new party coming in, mm -hmm. and that venture um, does not do that well. The costs go up. The service is not as good as it seems. Then uh, how do you deal with that? So to go back, uh, th and thank you for your question. It's a big risk that we need to mitigate. And so the, the primary, like the primary um, requirement that we uh, had mentioned is that we need uh, people who are already successful. The three hospitals that are within the country, the private hospitals, are very successful in running their resources quite efficiently. So we believe that they would be the best partners to come in and take over. But in the case that we cannot find enough investment, then we would go further. But then we would also ensure that the FDI is well vetted to ensure that um, all the criteria is fill out and their management is on board and understanding of our current situation. So with uh, the three incumbents having an opportunity to, to come in and do it, um, although you have eight hospitals, so they have to really grow a lot to do it. So on the execution side, you mentioned that there is a shortage of doctors. So how do you envisage that you'll be facing this challenge? So to, there are two parts to it, so I'll cover the first part, which is that uh, the shortage of doctor is also an issue due to the fact that people are overusing your uh, free healthcare service due to the fact that um, they believe that it's um, very easy to go in and uh, self-referrals. So we want to minimize that through by using um, uh, by reducing the self-referrals uh, and to ensure that uh, through the digital platform we can also um, kind of control the amount of self-referrals and the abuse of our free healthcare services. So um, another reason why there's a shortage of practitioners is also the training, uh, the training that is provided by the healthcare facilities. So a lot of, you have a lot of uh, hospitals, but not a lot of training programs are available at your, these hospitals. In fact, only one hospital offers uh, programs for trainees, and that's why we suggest that also these programs be expanded to a larger number of facilities. So how do you envisage that you make the, uh, the progress in the short term? Because these sound as though they're more mid-term and long-term kind of uh, solutions, yeah. So uh, again, as we have already been uh, laid out on the case, um, on, the, on the timeline, it takes uh, one year to one year and a half for us to apply on the process, um, to apply, to start and to apply the process. And that for, in the, the for, as I have mentioned before, that one year and one year and a half is to prepare for the shortage of many things like this. And uh, we believe that one year and a half could be, we, we could have done many things like uh, outsourcing the doctors from the other countries or uh, requiring the FDI uh, and doing the investment from the other firms from the foreign countries. We could uh, ask for the help of uh, uh, expertise trainings and uh, expertise uh, sourcing also. So, so additionally, to add on to his point, and as uh, Mr. Daniel has very clearly pointed out before, is that um, it's a huge disruption in the healthcare, mar uh, healthcare industry. So we believe that even though that we're hitting the uh, main um, health providers, there is also a network of smaller providers. So they will also, we can provide additional support to the smaller network to ensure that they can um, take the weight from the larger uh, providers. And our immediate, immediate uh, response can include uh, building the community uh, while alongside with uh, changing the regulations so that gradually you are transforming your people into adapting a new uh, approach uh, to, to, to their health. Thank you very much. Uh, just one final question. Have you 
looked at any other country or territory where the, the most of the majority of the healthcare is by the private sector and it costs much less. I've, I've not seen anyone. For instance, the United States is like that. It uses 18% of GDP. Other people use about 5%. We use, in Hong Kong, we use 5.5% for that. So have you got looked at any other um, country or territory system where people using completely private hospitals will actually, okay, it will be more efficient perhaps in terms of the treatment, but the cost. So to tackle the, the as you mentioned, uh, the United States has a big issue with their, um, both their um, healthcare providing and the pharmaceutical industry due to the fact that it's heavily privatized. And what we see is there is a clear lack of regulation that inf uh, ensures that uh, it doesn't go out of control. Um, like the recent increase in the EpiPen is um, an, an example of how they can really abuse the system. So we believe that um, if Malta is a smaller country and they can uh, easily try to control and regulate much more uh, efficiently compared to a big country like the United States. When you, when you look at your, your entire strategy, what do you think is your, your single biggest challenge? The trans uh, so to, our biggest challenge would be to ensure that the privatization occurs and we get the right partners for the privatization and that they follow through with the regulations. Um, that was the trans transition process from the very uh, traditional way that we are doing it to the way that all the, all the population is going to accept it and uh, get used to it. And we believe that it takes um, several years for that. Well, now you, you offered me many challenges. What, what is your, what's the big one? Is it the people or is it, is it getting a partner? It's very different challenges. We believe that getting a partner is a bigger challenge because for the big people, uh, as long as, as a governor, as uh, the, the, the one to provide health, as long as you believe at the positive effect for, the, your, for your people, then the whole process can be uh, transmitted quite easily through community, through uh, calling for help, through um, getting everyone involved. But for getting partner... So um, as Sally has mentioned, it's more of an inside-out approach. So the inside has to be solid for the outside to accept it. So people will not accept a bad healthcare system. Even, but if we provide them a better healthcare system, and though it is disruptive, they would still um, um, use it because uh, we provide them something that is more efficient and more up to date. And don't you think that you're underestimating the ability of a population to change in essentially 18, 24 months? We believe that it's going to take uh, several years, as I have mentioned before, to, for the population to change. But th that's why we provide a workshop throughout all the years to educate the, custom, uh, the consumer in a better way. And uh, besides that, um, we believe that this is a long-term project that's going to uh, change the whole, uh, the whole nation in a way. So um, the, the, as Rahul have mentioned before, the car, the um, inside, the business, is, uh, not the business, but the hospital has to be good so that they, it can build trust among the community, so that they can trust us and use it. And uh, the transitioning uh, may start from the higher education people, but how it can act as a domino effect, while people can educate people not uh, to support the government help also. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, RMIT University. Please make your way back to your seats.